we can start. All right, this time we'll call our work session, the February 22nd, 2022 work session to order. Jamie, could you please read the Sunshine Statement? Be advised that proper notice has been given by the Township Council in accordance with the Sunshine Law in the following manner. Notice advertised in the Burlington County Times and Camden Carrier Post on January 12th, 2022, and posted on the bulletin board on the same date. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Jenny? Here. Ms. Pereo? Here. Mr. Lyon? Here. Mr. Burrell? Here. At this time, we'll have minutes for approval. I need a motion approving the minutes for the September 28th, 2021 action work session and closed session meeting. Motion, Lynn. I'll second, Marlo Smith. Jamie, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pereo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Abstain. Mr. Burrell? Yes. Uh, the ayes have it, the motion carries, and minutes are approved. Next up, we have ordinances on first reading. This is ordinance 2022-02. An ordinance establishing various salaries for various employees of the Township of Delran, County of Burlington, State of New Jersey, and regulating the manner of payment of the same. Can I get a motion and a second? Motion, Lynn. Second, Tom Lyon. Jamie, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell. Aye. Yes, have it. Motion carries. The ordinance is introduced. Next up, we have resolutions. Resolution 2022-46, amending resolution 2022-14, the annual meeting notice. I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Virginia. I'll second, Marlo Smith. Uh, Jamie, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pereo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. The ayes have it. Resolutions adopted. Next up, we have our consent agenda, which includes resolution 2022-47, all the way to resolution 2022-51. Have any objections to the consent agenda, the items within? Seeing no objections, I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda, resolution 2022-47 to uh, resolution 2022-51. I'll entertain a motion. Motion, Lynn. I'll second, Marla. Jamie, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pereo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. The ayes have it, the resolution, consent agenda, and the resolutions therein passed. Next up, I am going to walk on before we get to motions, resolution, Jamie, what one is this? Resolution 2022-52. This is accepting the mayor's nomination and appointing Eileen K. Fahey to serve as the interim township solicitor. I'll make a motion. Marlon Smith. Second, Tom Lyon. Jamie, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pereo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, resolutions adopted. Next up, we have our motions. Motion authorizing the payment of bills, including all purchases made under cooperative purchasing agreement. So moved, Tom Lyon. Second, Lynn. Oh, go ahead, Virginia. Virginia. Virginia will have a Jamie. Could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pereo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. The ayes have it. The motion carries. And uh, Jamie, do you want to walk on the motion to authorize the RFP? Is that all you need, the solicitor? Yes. Yep, we can do that. At this time, I'll just walk on a motion authorizing Jamie to uh, publish an RFP for the township solicitor spot. We'll give Jamie the authorization to do that and we will go out to RFP to find a solicitor. So moved, Tom Lyon. Second, Lynn Jenny. 
Jamie, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Jamie will get that out at some point this week. Awesome. So now we are in our work session portion of the meeting. We have two items. Uh, Jim, you're in the hot seat, so thank you for joining us. We were worried there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I was having a little computer problem logging on. No worries, no worries. So, uh, Jim, you're up first with the Army Corps update. Yes, uh, well, we circulated in the packet the uh, draft PMP, and PMP stands for the Project Management Plan. Um, this is for uh, River Drive. Uh, a lot, many years ago, we asked the Army Corps to, uh, there's, a, there's a special program in which you know, the federal government provides money uh, for uh, what they call stream bank stabilization projects. And uh, the governing body about, I think, around 2016 solicited the Army Corps to be included, to ask, ask the Army Corps for a dollar to be included in that project. So um, they got that request. They studied the area. Uh, they did a, an initial study calling a federal interest determination. And they, they, they did agree that, you know, that they was a federally interested project that they could participate, that the project um, or the concern, uh, which is the erosion along the, the stream embankment, uh, was something that needed to be addressed and should be addressed, and it met, met with the eligibility requirements of this program. So um, now that that federal interest determination process has been completed, um, they put together what's called the project development plan. And basically, it's the next phase of the planning process. Uh, it's what I, I like to call concept development. Uh, they're they're going to bring on a team of different professionals uh, and experts in various fields uh, from engineering. Uh, environmental sciences, um, real estate, you know, everything you can think of that deals with um, projects like, like this and uh, develop different concept alternatives to address the problem. Ultimately, I believe it's going to end up being some sort of like armament project where they, they, they clear out along the stream bank and put back some sort of either like large stone or, or sheet piling or some sort of physical measure to you know, keep it from eroding further. But they do have to, you know, study all alternatives and uh, and uh, also the do nothing approach. Where if they do nothing, what would happen to the area with you know, you know flooding and, and and the financial impact that will have? So if they show that we do nothing, the cost to you know Delran, to you know the the government, um, the federal government, uh, to the region will will be far worse than you know doing a project now to stabilize the embankment. So they have to show that to make sure the project continues to be something that's eligible. So, um, so the report just basically outlines that study, the time frame, and the costs. Uh, there is a cost share requirement for the local sponsor, which is Delran. Uh, it's 50% of the study cost, uh, and the study cost is estimated about 400,000. Um, it's a draft plan right now because the Army Corps did need a little bit more time to finalize those the cost estimates, which they felt would be, or aren't gonna change much, uh, if at all. But uh, so we can you know, be comfortable that our uh, max cost share requirements are about 200,000. So at this point, um, for the project to move forward, uh, you, the, the council's going to have to, or the town's going to have to sign into an agreement with the Army Corps and the federal government to uh, you know, participate in the project and you know, come, come with the money once it's called upon uh, as the study progresses. So um, I guess that would be a consideration for your budget uh, moving forward for this year. Jim, is there, maybe this is a question for Joe, can that be capitalized or does that have to come out of the operation budget, the 200? Uh, there, this, this could, in all likelihood, be capitalized, very, uh, Tyler. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that's, so, yeah. that's a piece of good news. <laughs> uh, in the report, you'll note that they, they estimated that'd be about 18 months once all the agreements are, would be signed if, you know, if, you know, the, the, the council does decide to move forward with this. Uh, it would probably take at least a couple months just to get the agreements ready to be signed. Um, it, it, when we originally sat down with Army Corps about five, six, seven years ago, and they explained this process, they did explain and warn how, how, how lengthy of a process it is that these programs take somewhere from eight to 10 years to, you know, to come to fruition. And then COVID did certainly didn't help. We, we lost, you know, everything went shut down and nothing really happened. So we're in the middle of that process. You know, it's, you know, luckily that, the Army Corps and the feds have, you know, agreed that it's something that interests them and it's a concern to them. And, uh, 
And uh, so this is the middle part to, to, to uh, you know, advance it to a, to a design. The next step, it would be once the study is done is to actually do a design on the, on the plan of corrective action that is decided on. Um, that will something we'll have to be talking about when, once that's ready, there is a cost share for that as well. Uh, there are other grants though that are available to help subsidize your non-federal cost share. Um, and uh, we had some interest in that would be interest from those those groups that provide those grants so we can hopefully offset those costs in the future. Yeah, Jim, can you just give a like a 30 second high level on once we get to that point for the cost share at the final stage, can you just, you said that the state can kick in, the feds can kick in, right? There's a bunch of options we have. Uh, yeah, hold on, my uh, computer went. You have this off the top of your head? Yeah, uh, hold on, I'm sorry, I don't know why I lost my video. Do you still, you still see me? Yes. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, uh, the design and construction aspect of the job, uh, there's a 35% non-federal cost share. Uh, now with that, so, so say it's a million dollar project, you'd be responsible for 350,000, but the uh, NJDEP has a program called the Shoreline Protection Program, which they fund projects like this. Uh, we actually solicited, or put an application in a while ago to that program to help with this problem. And we were not, we were told they were, we were on the waiting list, but because uh, they uh, earmarked usually their money for Army Corps related projects, that we were unlikely to be um, uh, be selected or funded because we were at we weren't at the time you know involved with the Army Corps. Now that we're involved with the Army Corps, um, it looks we have a, we're confident that once we go back to them, we can say, look, we got this project. Army Corps is involved, and uh, you know, and then they provide seventy five percent of our thirty five percent cost sharing. So we do the math, uh, we'll be whittled down to whatever seventy five percent of thirty five percent. Good. Is there any, yeah, that makes some sense. Um, so there's any, I mean, we don't have an ask from us until we get to budget, right? Until we get to the capital budget. The question is, do we put this in the capital budget? Right, Jim? Uh, yes. Yeah. I think, I think the good, the good news right. for the residents on this one is, you know, looking at the uh, management plan, you know, they've committed people to the project, uh, their actual uh, assignments made and, and ma um, uh, milestone dates to be set to prepare the first part of the plan. So it looks like they're serious. Yes, yeah, that's for sure. This is, I mean, there's no question this has been a long process that started way before I was here. Uh, but, you know, I think this is, this is the next step. We're glad that we're at this point and we gotta continue, keep going down that road. Uh, ultimately, I know we've talked to residents, Virginia and I have been out a couple of times recently and, you know, the township could come up with this money ourselves and do a patchwork job. But, you know, unless we get support of all the agencies involved, uh, we're not going to have a solution that actually solves the problem and that lasts long enough uh, to justify the cost. So that's why we're working with the Army Corps of the state. We're doing it the right way. Uh, which ultimately, it does take a little bit more time, but I think it'll be for the better in the long run. Uh, Virginia? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, you know, I think we all know how I feel on this. Um, this is the biggest issue in my ward. We have to protect the infrastructure down there, but more importantly, we have to protect the homes. The residents of Riverside Park have waited a long time, and so have we. And now that we have the Army Corps of Engineers, the only ones that are capable of doing a project of this sort, um, that are willing to do it. So I just think we have to do whatever it takes to make it happen. That's all. Agreed. Agreed. Well said, Virginia. Council President, I'd just like to echo Virginia's response. I mean, you know, I was here when we first um, uh, reached out to the Army Corps, and it was uh, there were a lot of people involved, and uh, I thanked them. And we knew that it was a long haul, and I'd just like to, to uh, mention, Jim has been diligent about doing that. I know that Virginia talks to Jim all the time to make sure he's on it, and he's been on it, and, you know, to get them involved. Uh, I know that we did a, uh, a letter of interest, I believe it was 2016. Jim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, if you know, um, that said that we would be interested if they would be interested. So um, I encourage council to uh, look at this and uh, I will talk with uh, Joe Bellina and, and include it in the budget and you can decide what you wanna do with that going from there. Thanks, sir. Awesome, I agree. So let's, you guys, any other questions from 
questions or comments from council. Jim, is, can, I, can I just ask one more thing? Jim, is there anything we need to do by way of uh, any kind of a commitment letter or yeah, we're gonna do this or we have to wait until it's actually in the budget? Well, you, you have to you have to enter into agreement with the um, with the Army Corps. So there is a draft agreement that will be circulated. Uh, they gave us a, a sample copy of one already, but it wasn't customized yet for this project. Uh, it's your routine, you know, cost share agreement where you know they say you know you're, you're going to do X, Y, Z, and you're going to pay this, and we're going to pay that. So signing that agreement will kick off the next phase. In order to sign that agreement, though, you're you're committing to two hundred thousand dollars. Right. So, you know, that just has to, uh, so you would think that, yeah, you need the budget for it in order to sign that agreement. Okay. Just trying to get the, the, the next step as, as we go. So, but we can do those, we can look at them simultaneously. We don't, we can't sign the agreement until the council decides to spend the money. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Just making sure. Cool. Great. Okay. So, um, Mayor, you're out that in the capital portion of the budget that's presented to us and we'll go from there. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Well, with that, we'll go to our next item. Jim, you're still on the hot seat. We have the uh, 2022 road program discussion. Um, so yes, so I also circulated for the packet um, for you our estimate of uh, the road projects that we were planning for 2022. I did bring these up. I don't know if anybody remembers uh, randomly last year uh, because of the nature of the projects. So on the list of what we're recommending for 2022 is uh, Edgewood, Fordham, and Howard. Those are streets that New Jersey American Water is going to be paving, repaving for us because they just did water main work. Uh, and then our plan is to do some concrete repairs in advance of them paving this year. Um, this is a project that New Jersey American Water uh, decided to do late last year after we already funded the 2021 road program and didn't have enough money to do these roads as well because they, we weren't aware that New Jersey American War was going to be doing the mains over there. So um, we did talk about this last fall because we New Jersey, we uh, pushed New Jersey American Water off from paving last fall so we could budget for this these improvements um, this year and get out ahead of them uh, to do things like apron repairs, the concrete aprons and the handicap ramps. Uh, I know there's some curbs that are deteriorated and should be replaced before uh, we pay before they pave. So um, it's, it's a tradi traditional treatment that we've been doing to all the roads in that area. Um, and then the next one was Notre Dame Drive and Court. Uh, New Jersey American Water also replaced all the water mains throughout that drive and, and uh, th those two roads. Uh, and actually, in, a few years ago, PCG had a lot of uh, there was leaks and gas leaks that they had to go back in and cut in the road to. Uh, to fix those leaks. So the road is in rough shape with all the temporary patches. Uh, and because Notre, uh, of course, New Jersey Mac Water did their mains, they're gonna uh, split some of the costs for resurfacing. But we do, do need to do a full road reconstruct through there. So our cost is a little bit higher than it would be if uh, it was resurfacing. But because New Jersey is available to, you know, sit for um, some of the money to, to cut down our cost uh, and the condition of the road, we, we recommend that that get done this year. Uh, and also um, Haynes Mill Road from Route 130 to Conroe. That's the subject of two years worth of municipal aid grants totaling uh, approximately 385,000. Um, so we, you know, that needs to get done as well because we do have uh, timelines in which we have to uh, spend the grant money um, for, you know, for the grants we get. So that that's for in total uh, less with all these soft costs and less, uh, the grant money and the New Jersey American Water cost share, you're just under a million. And I also included in the packet like samples or, or our previous road lists from last three to five years showing that that's generally, you know, about a million, a little under a million was what you've been, you know, budgeting before. Last year was a little different because of the New Jersey American Water PC and G um, were also involved and we didn't have to spend as much because they were getting, we were getting a lot of paving through them. Uh, and, um, but yeah, so that, those are the recommendations right now. I did put on the list what we're looking at at 2023 into to 2024, so you can see what's coming. Uh, Redstone Ridge, Pine Valley Drive, and Drew, Drew and Randall Court have been on the list for uh, a while. Uh, they got pushed because of all the because of PCG New Jersey American Water showed up, and we had to you know move to get all that done because we got so much out of it. 
Uh, but that is something we're we definitely targeting next year, unless, you know, I didn't think there'd be more money for this year, but so I don't know if anybody has any questions. Any uh, questions from council? No, I mean, I, I, before anyone jumps in, I, I think this is, I mean, some of this, we don't have an option, right? Because uh, I think I like the way you laid it out. So I appreciate that. And but some of this, we don't have an option for, right? With PSE and G and all that. So, um, you know, we have to do the Edgewoods, the Fordhams, the, the Howards and the Notre Dame, right? Um, and then all, always excellent work on the, uh, the grants associated with Haynes Mill, right? That's a heavily traveled road. We constantly apply to that municipal aid grant for those heavy traveled roads in town. And we seem to get them every year, which is fantastic for every other year. Um, yeah, Conroe Road was, Conroe was a municipal aid grant. Yes. That's what we just finished. That was two years of grant that I think was like 95% covered by the grant. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for all of council so they can jump in, but I think this is, you know, right around the mark of how much we normally spend. I mean, sort of the struggle with this is that, and we have to rely on the mayor and, and Joe on this, but I mean, you know, we want to move, you know, we normally, we've been putting these before the budget process so that we can try to move as quickly as possible, kind of preempt the budget in a way and get these done in this fiscal year rather than wait for the budget and do all the post-budget stuff. So, I mean, my, my main question is, can we ensure whatever the process is that we get this done within the, this year? Or do we have to, you know, without Jeff here, I know he was always on top of that process. So is that Joe, Jim, Gary question? I, I think a lot of it's going to depend on how quickly the funding becomes available, uh, Tyler. And uh, if we could get these projects out to bid by late spring, early summer, there's a good chance that you could at least achieve substantial completion by winter shutdown. Uh, and, and when substantial completion usually means, you know, the road work's done, the concrete work's done, you just have punch list items, like we have from a few road projects from last year to follow up this coming spring. It, it's, it's conceivable that it can be, uh, it could be uh, reached that point there, uh, Mr. President. Great. And Jim, you can make, help us make sure we do that. Yeah, you know, we get we do everything we can to be ready. So once that once the budget is adopted and the bond ordinance, assuming it's a bond ordinance is adopted, we're we're often flying on the design uh, and getting that ready out the bid. Great. So I mean, <laughs> from, you know, we're trying to hit a moving target, but Joe and and Gary, I mean, is this number palatable so far in what we're seeing with the budget debt service wise? Like this isn't going to shatter us. We okay? I mean, we don't have all the final numbers uh, put together and we're waiting for some things. The audit was just, uh, you know, they just left the building a week or so ago. So we'll get some more numbers from them, but, um, you know, we, we're ready to pounce on this. And the issue is always, as you know, uh, one of my biggest uh, issues when uh, I was on council was that just the, the time it takes. So, you know, it, it seems like, oh, geez, between now and September, uh, but everything takes an inordinate amount of time, but uh, we're prepared to move on it as quickly as we can. Great, okay. Hey, hey Jim, are you seeing in um, that particular industry, the contractors, um, uh, labor shortages or anything that would cause any kind of delays or are they, they on top of it? Um, no, no, no real labor shortages. Um, these types of projects, it's more about certain materials. Um, these projects really were not impacted by materials. Um, uh, water pipe, water pipe has, has been on a delay. That's why that project across the street on Chester Ave, the, whole, the Holy Cross development, that's why that was delayed a long time because they couldn't get the the, uh, the ductile iron water pipe delivered. Uh, but no, we're 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 still good and our and the prices are still reasonable. It's all about if the oil goes up, it costs more. All right, I guess. That depends on some of the national mm. affairs we're watching. So, uh, it's the same prayer. Hopefully, that stays stays well. All right, Jim, we can get kind of whacked with some bids that come in. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this is solid. I think we're continuing to put the infrastructure first, especially if we have you know uh, these roads on there, a million dollars worth of roads. If we do uh, the river project capital, and yeah, I know there's some discussion, early discussions about some other capital projects, fields, and things of that matter. You know, these are capital projects 
are expensive, but it has to get done. It's a part of doing business in town and we need to make sure we keep our infrastructure you know, moving forward and not aging rapidly like most of the country. So is there any other questions or comments from council? Uh, I got this a little bit. Um, Hartford Road, which um, by Fairview, that's county now. Have you heard anything about them doing anything with that? Um, an inquiry, like it's it's getting beat up pretty bad over there. I, I noticed that, council, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll make an inquiry uh, this week, okay? Yeah, I, yeah, I'd appreciate that because um, I do travel that. You know, maybe not daily, but several times during the week, and um, that's kind of rough in there, and, and that needs uh, some some TLC through there. Yeah, I, I heard from a resident that they saw somebody out there spray painting that area. That's really bad, Tom. So maybe they're te teeing up to measure it and you know get involved. So Joe, if you could find that out, that would be that would be fantastic. We'll do. Thank you, Joe. Good question, Tom. Any other questions or thoughts from council? Okay, great. So Jim, I think we're good with that generally, conceptually wise. You know, barring any huge you know, blow out in the budget or something. So, um, you know, we'll keep moving forward on our side budget wise. And then if you can just manage this, so the minute we get there, we can have all the ordinances teed up and get this out to bid right away. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, Jim. You have anything else for us, Jim, or you're good? Uh, no, unless anybody has any questions, council or public. All right, seeing that, we'll go to our reports. First up is Interim Township Administrator, Joseph Alina. Joe, anything for us? Uh, simply, Mr. President, I, I was speaking with, uh, with Brian Mullen, our Public Works Director, earlier today, and the dates have been established for our spring cleanup, and that'll be Wednesday, April 20th through Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, we'll have the, the, uh, the yard open from 3 to 7 p.m. with all the dumpsters that we need. So. We'll be advertising and getting the word out over the next few weeks. Great. That is all. Great, thank you. I know that's a popular event, so if we could get that online and <clears throat> to the masses, that'd be great. we Will do. Thank you. Next up, we have a report from our clerk, Jamie Agers. Jamie, we think. Thank you. Um, just one item. Uh, we received a request from Public Works and Police to sell some, um, you know, unused equipment. Um, we're going to be selling it on. It's through a state contract on Municipid. Um, we used to do gov deals. Now Municipid has the state contract. So I just wanted to give you the heads up that the resolution will be on for the um, public meeting. And if you have any questions, you can uh, let me know. Great. Thank you, Jamie. Next up, we have report from Mayor, Mayor Katrinbo. Thank you, Council President. Um, just like to first uh, say thank you to uh, our interim solicitor, Eileen Fahey, who, who had jumped in on literally a moment's notice um, earlier this afternoon to uh, help us have this meeting tonight and uh, hopefully get us through to uh, um, through the process to hire the next township solicitor. I also like to uh, uh, mention uh, really good news that we received the bikeway grant and safe streets to transit. So what they mean, uh, Delray Community Park bike path improvement grant uh, that's uh, 1.2 plus million dollars. Uh, and that grant provides funds to uh, counties and municipalities to promote uh, bicycling as an alternative mode of transportation. It certainly promotes health and wellness throughout the area. And uh, that will go, uh, that actually was the largest bike path award, uh, grant award um, in Burlington County. Uh, and maybe more than that, I know for sure in Burlington County. And that's because that will connect a community park and Notre Dame uh, Drive Park. Uh, that means that it must cross uh, Swedes Run uh, through the woods. And uh, as uh, Jim tells us often, whenever we're dealing with water, uh, we have to be especially careful and there's uh, additional costs. So uh, great news for us and the state safe streets to transit. Uh, there'll be uh, lots of intersections and other areas with the sidewalks that will be included. Um, uh, not the least of which that is proposed is uh, it, along Chester Avenue uh, for all the many children that are uh, walking home from school. Uh, that, that particular uh, grant was $575,000. Uh, 
and that'll allow, uh, that'll be for Route 130 and Chester Avenue uh, pedestrian crossing and, and safety improvements for the, uh, that'll be for the design and installation of those sidewalks that I mentioned. And it, it's kind of a safety and access to mass transit riders uh, walking to transit facilities. And uh, uh, again, those are grants that provide funding to uh, counties and municipalities. And we were, we were very happy and very lucky to get uh, over uh, $1.7 million this year. So uh, congratulations to us. And uh, that is the conclusion of my report. Thank you, Mayor. Next up, we have a report from our interim sol solicitor, Eileen Fahey. Do you have anything for us? Good evening, Mr. Right. President. No, no yes. report this evening. Great, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you coming up. Thank you. Right, next up, Jim, you're back again. Our engineer from CME Associates, Jim Winkowski. Jim. Uh, hi, uh, nothing, nothing more to add. I, I do wanna tag on to what the mayor said. Those two grants, the bikeway and the safe streets for transit are highly competitive. And the amount of money you got is spectacular. And yeah. it, it is amazing how much, so that, that's all. Great. So Jim, you're, you'll work on, I remember you said, it's very unlikely that we will get the bike, the, the park grant. I remember you saying that, mm -hmm. uh, but we did it anyway. So I'm yeah. glad we did. Uh, so your your office will plan that, you know, concept plan, like you guys got that taken care of? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very early. We, we just were okay. found out about the grant. So next thing is we're going to get agreements sent to us in the mail. And then similar to the municipal aid, there'll be a timeline in which you have to spend the money. So okay. I'll have to work with the mayor and, and uh, the administrator on the budgets for them. Uh, and then, you know, the, 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 the scheduling. Uh, the sidewalk will definitely be a lot, be a lot easier to get done than the the, the bikeway with the with the bridge crossing over the Swedes Run, but it's definitely not impossible, and we have money for it, so it's going to be an exciting project. Yep, great. Thanks, Jim. Looking forward to seeing that come to fruition. Great. Uh, all right. Next up, we have reports from members of council. I'll start off with Councilwoman Virginia Brejo. Councilwoman. Yes, really quick. I want to welcome Eileen, and um, also I want to thank Jim for all the work he did to get us to where we are with the Army Corps of Engineers. And also thank you to everybody who contributed to that prior to myself coming on board. That's all I have. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Councilman Marlo Smith. Councilman? Yes, I'd just also like to welcome uh, Solicitor Fahey uh, to the team. Uh, thanks again for uh, being flexible and being able to step in uh, so we can have our meeting this evening. Uh, also just looking forward to uh, you know having these meetings again in person next month. So. That's my end of my report. Thank you. Next up, we have a report from Councilman Lynn Jenny. Councilman. Thank you, Council President. Uh, just an update on We Value Our Veterans. I, I spoke with um, Sean Hiron. Uh, he's the um, vice commander at Post 3020. And they're going to be uh, working on developing uh, ideas on who would be uh, a good veteran to be honored. We do anticipate having a selection for our March uh, public meeting. So I'm looking forward to that. Also on March 3rd, I'll be attending a roundtable discussion sponsored by Governor Mur Murphy. Uh, thanks to Carol Murphy's uh, email on that. <clears throat> I was also uh, honored to attend uh, with our council president, uh, Eagle Scout Court of Honor. Uh, Saturday before last for Alex Lane, a Delran resident, an awesome achievement in uh, Troop 27. Uh, he, uh, it, it was really a very interesting, unique uh, ceremony, and I enjoyed being there. Uh, I do have uh, comments uh, regarding um, some issues we've been facing, so if you'll bear with me a moment. Um, good evening, Mayor, fellow members of council, and residents of Delran. I have elected to speak out tonight regarding issues that have been confronting our town government for a number of months. Why now? After the comments made by council members last meeting, I felt this time was appropriate. I, along with members of council, preferred to allow the mayor the opportunity to respond and clarify the issues being raised. I'm very dissatisfied with the way the issues have been handled. It would have been much clearer if many of the responses now being presented by the mayor had been done so in a more timely manner. Some of what we now know about the issues were not known when the first inquiries were made. Nonetheless, clear, succinct responses would have been better than no response. I prefer to be clear in my comments tonight. Many words have been spoken. 
and written regarding our township celebration for the retirement of a Delray native who can arguably be considered one of the greatest female soccer players of all time. It seems the more these words are repeated, the issues become more confusing. Create a narrative that is based on innuendo, allegations, and rhetoric based on false premises. Mayor Catrabone addressed the issues on unethical behavior and or criminal actions. He then took the initiative to reach out to the state of New Jersey to determine whether or not the narrative that has been created holds water. It was clearly stated in response to Mayor Catrabone's request by a state official that there are no violations of the state's ethics or criminal laws. Continued attempts were made to contradict the state's conclusion. The attempts merely muddied the waters as has been done so many times. Looking at the facts, there was no violation. Again, could the issues have been handled a better way? I must say yes. The fact remains that through all of the rhetoric, misinformation, muddying of waters, and outright false information presented at township meetings, there has been no violation as has been stated numerous times by the mayor and the township attorney. We are lay people. We rely on our professionals for advice. They are experts in the laws and ordinances we adhere to. Again, members of council were reluctant to speak sooner in order to allow the mayor to resolve the issues. We are now at a point where we must move forward. It is time to end the constant false and misleading narrative. I especially find it disturbing that council members and the mayor must be escorted by police when leaving in-person public meetings due to the aggressive, threatening and insulting actions by some individuals. This narrative was created to benefit an individual's blog, gain more exposure and possibly obtain money from the township. These are not made up, but spoken clearly at a public meeting on October 26, 2021 as the end goal of the attacks on our township. It was made clear that the goal was to locate another township apparently number eight, according to the public comments made by the accuser, that may present opportunities for similar treatment. It was also stated that $7,000 was awarded when a lawsuit was settled after another municipality was subjected to similar scrutiny. These parasitic actions damage the system set up to address real violations or of state and local laws. Lastly, I will address another issue raised regarding the council vote on the settlement that was agreed upon by both parties to remedy a suit filed by Dumpy Landscaping. Without confusing the issue with a long story, the question is, should Councilman Smith and myself have recused ourselves from voting on a settlement that would be best for the township or enter into a process to defend the township and spend more taxpayer money? As was stated by Councilman Smith at our last meeting and echoed by me, the question was asked whether a recusal was necessary. The answer from our professional, our attorney was no. Therefore, I reject the comments made to the contrary. We voted honestly and with integrity. In conclusion, I value my integrity and reputation in this community after serving 16 years on the Board of Ed, six years as president, over four years on the Delray Zoning Board of Adjustment, two as a chairperson, and now going on my second year as councilman at large. I am proud and honored to have served with integrity and with the best interests of Delrayan always being a priority. Delrayan has been my home for over 43 years. I reject insinuations, allegations, and disparaging comments made at meetings and on social media that are inaccurate, contain false and malicious information and attempt to damage my reputation. Based on the previous facts and after slogging through the false comments and conclusions, I require, I request an apology from those who continue to generate false and inaccurate information. I pledge to continue to serve our community with integrity and pride. Those are the end of my comments. Thank you, President, Council Thank you. President. Thank you, Len. Next up, we have a report from our Vice President of Council, Mr. Tom Lyon, Mr. Vice President. Uh, thank you, uh, Council President. Um, thank you, Councilman Jenny. Um, like to just uh, comment on the Army Corps project that Jim was talking about down in Virginia's ward. Um, I think we need to do whatever we can 
um, to get that project moving, fund it, and and get a long term solution down there. <clears throat> Hopefully, we we could be part of that, or make sure future councils uh, go through with it since it is a very long project. Secondly, um, welcome, Ms. Fahey. Again, it's, it's great to see you. Um, she is a very, very competent, smart individual, and we're, we're happy to have her, and we appreciate you coming in on um, short notice. Um, next, uh, I had the pleasure of being able to be a part of the Delran Tab Township Visioning Meeting, and uh, what was really cool about it is we had so many people uh, chime in, and there was definitely a theme of um, looking forward for Delran and, and how do we create sustainability and green initiatives and uh, more sidewalks for people to to walk. And then we got the bike grant for biking and uh, um, looking forward to what can we do with um, possibly helping with the EV situation with charging and, and new projects that are coming in, whether they're private, public, or a combination of the both. But I, I really, um, there were some great great ideas that were put forth by the body at, at large. Um, and great job on the grants. Um, there, some of them are really hard and competitive to get. So um, hats off to everybody that was involved with getting those grants. Um, that's my report, thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Vice President, appreciate it. Uh, for my report, just wanna echo some of the comments made by my colleagues. Uh, first, I wanna be remiss if I didn't um, take a moment and acknowledge um, that uh, Sal Siciliano is no longer with us. Uh, although we, me and him did not see eye to eye, I do wanna thank him uh, for his service to the township uh, many years before he served as a solicitor. And uh, I really thank him for moving on peacefully and uh, preventing, uh, moving on peacefully, I should, I'll leave it at that. Um, but I also wanna uh, mention a couple of things. Tom, Tom uh, talked about uh, Vice President, uh, I, I do have to say I did meet with a couple of residents this week and uh, I did talk about how CME Jim does a fantastic job at making sure we get grants, right? And grants are, uh, we always say free money for the township, right? We have to pay a little bit for Jim to do that and, and to organize some of them. But I mean, we have, you know, Jim, I'm sure you can get me the number next meeting, but millions of dollars worth of grants in, in a few years. Uh, and that is huge for the residents because uh, if it didn't come from the state, it would have to come from our coffers, right? And then that means we can't do certain things. So, uh, Jim, I just want to thank you for staying on top of that. You know, some of these very tough applicants and sometimes we're just, you know, you're just applying and, and praying and sometimes it works out. So I, I thank you very much uh, for doing that for the residents. Um, and uh, the last and final thing is I'm sure there's a lot of members from the uh, river and near the river who are joining us tonight. And I agree with uh, the comments made by Virginia and, and Tom. Uh, about you know working to get a solution for for the river and I, I without putting the cart uh, before the horse I believe you know council will fund this project and um, you know especially the, the this concept plan and and hopefully keep moving in the right direction we can get a long-term solution for the river so uh, with that that'll conclude my comments um, and we'll now open the floor to public comments so I'll ask for a motion motion Tom Lyon. Uh, Tom, can you second for me? Second, please, Tom Line. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Our floor is now open to public comment. Uh, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand on Zoom and you will be recognized and put into our participant room here. I just state your name and address for the record. Uh, any individual speaker has five minutes of time, which he or she can do with what she pleases. And all statements are part of the public record tonight. Uh, which is both written, video, and audio recorded and cannot be redacted or retracted after the fact. So with that, if you could please raise your hand, you'll be recognized and we'll go through public comment. Uh, Jamie, first up is uh, Ms. Littleton. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, how are you? Not too bad, and you? Good, good, the floor is yours. So I want to thank uh, whoever uh, worked on those applications for the grants. Um, I, I think those are good things for the township and and everyone who had a hand in that. I really applaud your efforts. So um, 
that being said, I would like to welcome uh, Ms. Fahey uh, <laughs> as well as everyone else. Um, so I'm gonna start off my comments uh, a little frustrated. Uh, council continues to be irritated by questions and uh, of prior concerns, meeting after meeting after meeting and continues to accuse the residents of increasing costs to the township because of the significant number of OPA requests. Yet limits our question time to five minutes per person, will not let anyone yield to another speaker, even though the meeting decorum rules do not prohibit this and Robert's rules of order expressly allow it. And continues to say, trust us, everything is legal and ethical here but do not provide evidence to support these assertions. I utilize the OPA request to validate your responses as I do not have trust in some of the actions that are happening with the council and mayor. Uh, typically a review of the OPA information uh, sometimes invalidates responses made by you, uh, sometimes brings to light new information that you have not shared with us in prior meetings, causing us to rehash previously discussed actions over and over again. I will say that sometimes it validates exactly what you said. So I'm looking at this with open eyes and I am not making assertions. So a lot of my comments tonight are gonna to be based upon facts. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't believe any of you at some point or another understands the word transparency or what it means to be transparent. My personal opinion, you can disagree. Mayor, I, I wanna put you on the hot spot for a little bit. Um, so Mr. Jenny said that you received a response from the ethics committee or the uh, state's ethics committee. Did you receive a response for your investigation that you requested? Actually, actually uh, um, Mr. Duff received the response prior to, to me receiving a response. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> so you have not received one for you. I have am not, I not yet. Okay. No, I, uh, maybe uh, Councilman Jenny misunderstood. And and I totally understand that. I just wanted to clarify for the record. Correct. Um, so I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the comments that you made during the 2-1 2022 public meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, you say there's, and, and Mr. Jenny just reiterated, that there's been a manipulation of facts, that there's insinuations and innuendos and, and all that, that's happening. And you say this, you allege that, and then later you misrepresent the facts yourself. The open response that the Department of Community Affairs set, uh, provided to Mr. Duff said ident uh, identified there were no violations of law and ethics on his first request. But there was a subsequent part that you did not read into the statement. So you misrepresented the facts yourself. Um, in that second response, Mr. Duff provided more explanation into what happened. And instead, the ethics committee did not say there, that this did not rise to the level of no violations and no ethics issues. They pointed Mr. Duff to the, the, the source documents where he could find the answer himself. So a little bit of misrepresentation of facts on your part, a little not transparent there. Um, as well, you started with questioning, or you said this all started with the questioning of fireworks expense. But that's not the case. Mr. Duff asked for the expenses for the Carly event, not specifically fireworks. What happened is one of the people who read his blog said, no, I, I donated money for the fireworks. So that can't be right. So he asked again and got some information that was not the same as the first information that the township provided. So he asked a third time to get it all. And this time he asked for all in and out money. And that's when we came to the 90,000. I mean, the, the price just kept going up and up and up. So here again, you misrepresented the facts. 
So please don't talk about Mr. Duff uh, misrepresenting the, the facts when you do it yourself. You requested to the state investigate. Uh, excuse me. You, go ahead. If you could just wrap up your comments, please, and then we'll. I'm already at five minutes. You're mm -hmm. at five thirty. Okay. Um, so there was the investigation. We can't find proof of investigation because you did that personally instead of out there on the state's website where we could see that. Um, we talked about the legal cost of $20,000 for the OPA request, but here again, we're having problems uh, providing oversight and, and we can't see what you're doing. You say you did not trespass, that you took those pictures on Dumpy's property. Right. I went out there and I walked it and I can prove you wrong. All right. Ms. Those are my Ms. comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, just, just in reference to um, Jamie, you can uh, remove from the floor. Just, just in reference to, I understand there's a concern. I thought it was addressed previously, but um, there's concern about the numbers have changed through various OPRAs, and um, the reason for such was that it takes time for the billing process to happen. Invoices come in; they have to get submitted to the township. There's a lengthy, lengthy process that happens, uh, PO process. So the minute the event, you know, at the end of the event, that particular event, right, all the costs have not been uh, spent, hasn't gone through all the purchasing process. So when the initial local request came in, the all the numbers weren't there. And that's why there was, unfortunately, a slow drip of information. Um, I do regret that that's the way that it happened. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but there was no malicious intent with that by any means. It was just sort of the nature of the billing process. Uh, but with that, I see uh, Mr. Egan had his hand up. Do you, did he put his hand down? Yes, he did. If you put your hand down, Mr. Egan, so if you want to speak, please just raise your hand. If there's anyone else who wants to speak. All right, last call. I'll ask for a motion to close the floor. Oh, Mr. Egan, go ahead. If... Hey, I'm sorry. No problem. I just didn't tonight. know if you wanted to back off. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, Mr. Jenny uh, mentioned something about the um, about the the police escorting uh, members after the meetings, you know, to their vehicles. Um, in his little statement, um, but is there like a reason why the, the police are present during the the meetings? Is there is a, there actually been a a threat made? For the police to, to be involved in the, the township meetings that we've had uh, in person, um, Mr. Egan, I'm not I'm not privy to that information. I'm, you'd have to ask the police department or the administrative wing wing of our township. I'm that's not I wouldn't uh, be privy to that, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, Council President. Then go ahead, Mr. Egan. You know the reason that started part of it was because of the fact that when Mr. Lyon and I were exiting the building, we were aggressively approached by Mr. Duff's uh, posse in my face, about two inches from my face, screaming at me. Mr. Lyon and I took the high road and walked away. Uh, the uh, posse followed us out and finally, uh, you know, Mr. Duff had to draw him back. So yeah, that's why. And I suggested to the uh, chief that we did not need it. And he said, please, we don't want to see anything happen in our jurisdiction. Okay. I'm sorry. I, di I didn't know about that incident. Um, That's okay. I don't know. I don't Thank know. If that one. I don't know if you've known, but some of the people that voice their opinions during these meetings, uh, one in particular uh, had uh, tires, all four of her tires slashed and someone was uh, threatened um, to be shot in the face. So I don't know if you've, you've heard of that. Uh, next, next thing um, I want to mention was, when, when did uh, Wendy Mitchell obtain her insurance for her communications director's position? Does anybody know? That'd be a question for the administration, uh, Joe or Gary. I don't have it in front of me. I could certainly get it and pass it along to uh, Mr. Egan. All right. Well, it was one seventeen of twenty twenty two. 
So oh, you know, okay. Yes. Well, I was trying to see if you knew. So she went a year as a communications director without insurance. Is does anybody have anything to say about that, or was any supposed anybody supposed to check up on her to make sure that she did have insurance? How how did something like this happen? Does anybody no, I, have an answer? I'm sorry. I, I can certainly. Uh... Uh, say that um, uh, it's my understanding that she was never asked to provide a certificate of insurance. And uh, that was certainly uh, something that, you know, we have, we, uh, I don't, I don't know if it was anybody's fault. I don't, we know that we didn't, it wasn't requested. Um, our previous administrator uh, certainly was up on all the laws and whether we needed it or not. And it was just never requested. I don't know whether, I don't know. Uh, but when it was requested, she provided it. A year later, I guess. No, it Our, was, it was, our, it, I believe it was the same day that it was requested. She provided information and an insurance. Yeah. Um, I beg to differ on that. That that's, that's not true. Um, is it, is that normal? What, what are you chuckling for? It's, it's not true. She went a year without insurance. It's a fact. She was um, not asked for insurance until, uh, the, I believe, the day uh, she provided it. Okay. So is there any oversight for uh, any contractors that work for the township? Uh, anybody supposed to be checking up on these quote-unquote contractors that work for the township? Is, somebody, is that somebody's job? Is that Mr. Bellina's job? Go. Yeah. Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. And, and I understand you, you just got this position, you know, after Mr. Hatch or so, so something happened in the meantime. Tyler, how much time do I have? Um, you have about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right. I'll make this quick. Um, Mr. Duff requested uh, the video for the Carly Lloyd event. Um, and there was a, a, an issue with the, uh, the minors. Um, you know, the, the children, that their faces had to be covered, redacted their faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, if that's the case, does uh, is Wendy Mitchell, should she be showing the, the minors' faces on her Facebook page? Facebook 2.0, Dalran 2.0. She's shown the uh, pictures of the minors during a party and their faces are not blocked. So how is it that she can show their faces, but Mr. Duff cannot get a video of the event um, that he's asked for? Tyler, you want me to answer that or? You can answer that, that's gonna expire our time, go ahead. Okay, so I would say that uh, that's not a governmental uh, website. Uh, none of the residence pages are, uh, based from in the government, uh, none of the official page. The only official page is Delran Township Municipal uh, Facebook page. And um, that's where, you know, when it, it's government, my understanding is that if it's government property that we have a, a, a certain level of criteria for releasing that. I don't know and that she, was- that was she a works for the township as a contractor. Yeah, but Delran Residence 2.0 is not something that is, uh, under her governmental purview. What she does in her own time is her own time. Oh, okay. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Egan, appreciate it. Next up, we have uh, Mr. Duff, Mr. Patrick Duff. Pat, can you hear us? I don't think, he, hey, Pat, can you hear us? If you're talking, we cannot hear you. Mr. Duff, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, can sorry, I'm, I'm going through a little bad cell zone here. I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure we can hear you. The floor is yours. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, let me first respond to some of the last week's comments uh, Mr. Uh, Lyon called me a carpetbagger and said, I'm coming to, uh, I guess, make money off towns. 
through these Oprah lawsuits, I've never made a dollar off any Oprah lawsuit <clears throat> that I've filed against any township. Um, to get to the second part where Lynn Jenny has said, I have stated mis Pat, we, we lost you. So if you're driving, I maybe not drive and pull over and then have we can have a conversation. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Pat. Can you hear us? Hold on one second. I'm getting out of the car. I'm going to go near yeah. my my, uh, my residence where I have better. Uh, can you hold my time, please? Sure. I, I, it's definitely better that you not drive than have a conversation. So I'm we'll, not driving. Somebody else is driving. Okay, good. Can you hear me now better? Yes. Yes, it's like a Verizon commercial. <laughs> Go ahead. A, bad, a really bad Verizon commercial. Um, because because the, it's almost like a uh, it's almost like a, an old Pulp Fiction uh, ad because you have such such a miss miss some 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 fallacies being presented. All right, I'm going to start your time. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now. Yes. Go ahead. Yep. All right. So here's where I'm at on this whole whole issue here, Delan. Um, first of all, uh, Lynn Jenny came out and said that I was making misrepresentations uh, and uh, presenting facts that were, were false. Well, all the facts that I presented were, were given from the open request I received from the township. So which facts, Mr. Jenny, have I produ produced that are false? You were on the zoning board that voted against the Dunphy variance, correct, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay, and you were the only one to speak against the, the, the zoning variance, am I correct? That's the choice of the members, Mr. Duff. Mr. That's Duff, great. this is not a, this is not a cross-examination of, of Lynn, oh, so well, we can keep going. Well, okay, let me answer one of his questions. Mr. Duff, you asked me uh, about the information. What the fact was, on October 26th, you said, that you earned seven thousand dollars from suing another township. No, I didn't say that. What, what is it? Show that fact, brother. You said that, sir. No, I didn't. And, and I've you never said made a that's what you said. I've that's what I do. Seven thousand dollars for all the work I put in. Yeah, I guarantee you the township would pay me that. Let me ask you guys a question. Why did your solicitor resign? Where's the memo the solicitor was supposed to produce? Does anybody have a copy of that memo? Because the only thing I have a copy of is a resignation letter. Mayor, you promised the mayor th that the solicitor would not resign and he would produce a memo. Do you have a copy of the memo, Mayor, or are you ready to explain your positions on those, those things that you said the solicitor would, would explain? So what I said was I was not going to ask the solicitor to resign, and I did not. He resigned on his own volition. No, you said you were going to direct him to write a memo to explain his positions right. on bid splitting, correct? And on, the, on, and on the other issues, such as you uh, you trespassing on the Dunphy property, correct? Which is an incorrect. Uh, by the way, the pictures that were submitted uh, that were taken from the street in front of the Dunphy property were submitted to the, the uh, judge. Correct. Uh, and surely if I was going to do something illegally to produce uh, pictures of something, I would not have trespassed in order to do that. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, so yes, can, I, can I ask you, Mayor? Mayor, can I ask you because at, 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 I was trying to right, answer right, the first right. question. Well, no, because I have I don't have limited time. At oh, the, yeah. I'll at, wait till the end. Did, did you did you offer to buy Dunphy's property after the zoning board uh, ref, re, refused his variance? Did you offer to buy the Dunphy property in 2020 after the zoning board refused the variance? We were talking with the owner of the property before Dunphy's bought that. Uh, I'm asking a different question. Did okay. you ask, did, 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 did the solicitor send an offer to Dunphy to buy the property? There was a meeting in September of 2020 where the township discussed acquiring a property. That property was 4101 Bridgeboro Road. Dunphy still owned it. The variance was just refused. My question is, did you make an offer to the Dunphy's to try to buy their property after Lynn Jenny and Marlo Smith were part of the board, the zoning board that denied their variance? Mr. Duff, make an offer to buy Mayor, property? Mayor, Mayor, hold on. Mr. Duff, you have about 35 seconds. So I, my recommendation for you is to ask the rest of your questions and then we can answer them afterwards. I'm trying to help you out here and make the most of your okay, time. Great. 
So, so I'll finish by saying, I, I don't bluff. I filed a lawsuit against the township. It was just filed today. You can look it up. Uh, Duff versus Del Ren. It's got a great ring to it about the Carly Lloyd video. So uh, the township has been served right now uh, verbally, and you will be served physically by, by my attorney uh, for uh, uh, not releasing that video, which is just silly. Um, I need an answer as to why the solicitor resigned. There were supposed to be some answers as to bid splitting, as to the insurance. Listen, I can prove that the township was contacted prior to telling the insurance company they were contacted on the insurance uh, 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 for Dunphy. And that is insurance fraud. The township committed insurance fraud. We're talking about a major uh, crime that was done. I am not saying that it's a maybe. I'm saying that from the statements from the insurance advisor and from the statements from the township and from the, the evidence I can show from emails, that the township was involved in discussions and settlement negotiations with the Dunphy attorneys prior to when they ever told the uh, insurance company that they were involved in these. All right, Mr. That's Ducky. insurance fraud. So, I, so please answer Final my thought. question. Final yeah, thought. Mayor, 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 I gotta be honest. You are yeah. the linchpin and, and, and Mr. Jenny, saying like he didn't do anything wrong. Why did, why did the solicitor resign? If, he, if nothing was done wrong, where's this memo? Uh, let's, let's answer the questions. Bid splitting, uh, the insurance investigation, why I wasn't it filed on time? Answer all these questions, please. That, right. that was promised, promised to the citizens by the mayor. Wasn't it promised in your, in your video, mayor? Thank you, Let's, let's hear your response, please. All right, thank you, Mr. Duff, for your time and questions. We can address those, Jamie. Um, uh, the, the questions regarding, Mayor, you're gonna have to, to pick up the ball on those questions respectfully, but I, I will. Um, there was one question about Duff who mentioned a meeting, a closed session meeting. Um, I did have a few residents reach out to me regarding that. They are, uh, have some OPA requests um, related to that. So they're obviously aware of the nature of that. Um, and you know, Duff asked if, um, if we reached out to Dunphy's to buy the property, I think it's been well established that was a property that a council considered buying early on, the township considered buy, buying early on. We could not do that uh, for various reasons. Uh, at the time, after the zoning board appeal, or after the zoning hearing, there was an appeal, uh, the prerogative writ. And at that point, uh, council did meet and we did have a discussion. And, um, and I believe our solicitor at the time reached out to them and said, hey, what are you, what are you guys up to? Um, what are you guys looking at? You know, the council always, the township always has an interest in the property, always did. You know, would you be interested in selling? Are you guys continuing on? What's going on? Um, so we reached out just to kind of to feel them out. Um, but the rest of that is, is, is obviously closed session and we can't get into that. But I do know there's some emails associated with it. So I'm sure the questions would come. Uh, but, you know, I got to say that that's not uncommon for townships to do that. In fact, there's um, another property that went through a zoning process, got relief, they actually want it and now want to sell it back to the township uh, for various reasons. So it happens all the time. Uh, they get denied their relief or they get the relief they want. And sometimes the business proposition just falls apart. And then they come to the township because we have access to open space money, things like that. Grants, as Jim has identified for us plenty of times, right, that we can purchase these properties. So uh, it's not infrequent and not uncommon for that to happen at all. Um, so uh, just address that. Well, uh, thank you, Tyler, for, for that. I mean, that answered his question uh, with all the details. Obviously, I don't keep everything we've ever done over the last 13 years uh, at my fingertips. So I appreciate you uh, filling in the details for that. Um, and frankly, you know, I, I will either with the interim solicitor or uh, with the permanent solicitor replacement solicitor when that happens, still get that information. But I, I was not aware until it happened that um, Mr. Siciliano was going to resign. So uh, I did not receive the response from him on that. And uh, uh, we'll continue to find that answer and then we'll release it and let everybody know. There's no problem with that. All right, thank you. Uh, two other hands, Lou, I see, Jamie. Lou, we don't have a last name, but Lou, can you hear us? Do oh, have we suspended name and address for the record uh, permanently? No, or no. we should be doing that. Uh, Lou, 
can you hear us? I believe you're muted. So, Lou, last call, Lou. Jamie, you don't see anything, right? Or hear anything different? No, I can. Lou, you didn't mute, right? You permitted talking, I think. Yes. I'll, I'll see if right. I can ask to unmute. I don't know if that will work. All right, Lou, we're going to take you off the floor. Um, if you can get it to work, we'll go back to you. But uh, always, we can talk to you after the meeting. You can call members of council or uh, reach out to Jamie and we can schedule a call. Uh, I want to make sure your, your issues are addressed. Um, but next is, is last name Stretch. I don't want to butcher the, the first name, but uh, last name Stretch, correct? Can you hear us? Another person who's muted, right, Jamie? Can you hear me? Can you hear hey, me? Hey, we got you, yes. All right, beautiful. Hey, this is Scott Duco. That's my, uh, my business my business Zoom. So when I logged in through the app, okay, you got my- you just state uh, your name and address for the, for the record? I'm sorry. I'm uh, my name is Scott Duco. I, 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 like many of the people, I don't wish to uh, state my address. Um, so last week, the council had um, called for the- uh, the solicitor's uh, resignation, as well as the indirectly asking for the mayor's uh, resignation, is that still the uh, the council president's uh, position? This is Scott, right? Speaking yes. Of, yeah, Scott, my, my comments speak for themselves. Um, I'm not going to keep relitigating my past comments. Um, I'm, I'm glad the uh, Sal did the right thing for the township, and we can move on. Uh, and make steps forward. And now um, the the uh, the comments from Wendy Mitchell last week about uh, the police and her not being able to uh, attend Winterfest because uh, her her son and her were threatened. I believe was the term that she used. Uh, there was some kind of threat that she couldn't attend Winterfest, but. Isn't it indeed true that she was at Winterfest? Uh, and there was there was no threat. There was no call to the police. There was no communication to the police or the or the or the council of a of a threat to Wendy Mitchell. Um, so so that that seems like a blatant uh, lie on record. Do you, would you uh, can you can you speak on that? And if the mayor wants to speak on that, I'm not going to speak on. I mean, I, I I don't speak for Wendy Mitchell. I I she has to answer that herself. Um, I I'm I aware mean, that, of that's, I'm, that. I think that should be answered because she got up on a soapbox last week and just stated you know some some pretty inaccurate things. When we're talking about muddying the record, you know, those were some of the the words that have been used in the past that. Was there a threat? What, 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 was there a, a, a credible threat? I don't believe there was. Uh, I guess that truth will come out. So uh, I'm, okay. I'm okay with hearing the, the mayor speak on that. I, I'd like to, um, to just touch on the, um, the Tom Lyon comments from last week uh, as well. Um, I'm no one's lackey. I know uh, Mr. Lyons was speaking about me. I've known Patrick for close to 30 years. I've, I've worked with Patrick on many community, uh, uh, you know, projects. It's very similar to this one, you know, where we're, we just want to get to the truth. We just want to get, get the best for the citizens of, of any, anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Um, there was no threatening walking out of the uh, out of the the township, you know, the town hall. If anyone was doing threatening things, it was Mr. Jenny and Mr. Lyon, and that's what that's what initiated a response from me. I, sir, you know, sir, you're a liar, sir. Okay, well, I guess I guess there's other liars here. Then, yeah, then show show the video from the front of council. I You're mean, proving what we said. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, this is, I, it's funny. You guys are calling people liars because you've been up there lying for months about all this stuff that's going on. 
and and it's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. The solicitor has resigned. And I think it's correct that the council president called for the mayor's resignation. And the mayor is an embarrassment to the town. And he should resign. And if he doesn't resign, this isn't a threat for me. There, there is an active investigation with the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office. So, you know, maybe it's best to, to resign. You know, go out by yourself or go out in cuffs, Mr. Catron Bone. You guys have a good night. Thank All you. Right, thanks, Scott. Uh, is there any other uh, public comment? Please raise your hand. No, Lou, we had, right? Um, I don't see Lou anymore, right, Jamie? Last call no. for public comment. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to close the floor. Motion to come out of public. Thank you, Tom. I'll second, second Marlo Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. We are now closed. And we do not need an executive session. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Tom Lyon. Second, Lynn Jenny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. We will see you in a couple of weeks. Have a good night. Good night, good night. Good night everybody. Good night.